It's not just another day in your life. Things are changing for the better. At Comcast, we see those changes and we're thinking about how we use technology today to live, work, learn, and play. And we're building for the future now, so we're better prepared for the wants and needs of tomorrow. That's why Comcast is rolling out multi-gig internet speeds to more than 50 million homes and businesses before the end of 2025, making our already industry-leading network even faster, smarter, greener, and more reliable. Over the decades, Comcast has been your partner, working hard to serve your community, and will continue to be your partner. We're expanding our gigabits so you can enjoy the tiny bits that matter most. Want your boss to put some real action behind the rhetoric when they talk about making your workplace more inclusive? Find out how to hold their feet to the fire and demand diversity on the Diversity Dude Podcast. Hello there, and welcome back to the Diversity Dude Podcast. I'm your host, Lambert Fisher marriage and family therapist, award-winning author, and national speaker on the topic of multicultural awareness and diversity. And for those of you who are interested in even more positive and encouraging tips and strategies beyond what I share in podcasts like this, then feel free to check out my award-winning book, Diversity in Clinical Practice, nationally recognized for the unique way in which it addresses the often difficult topic of multicultural awareness and diversity, and designed for more than just therapists. If you're a helping professional in any way, Diversity in clinical practice can help you meet the greatest variety of cultural needs possible for those whom you serve, and is available in paper and audiobook versions for your convenience. And whether it be through my one-on-one relationship building efforts as a therapist or my informing and empowering efforts as an author or speaker, know that my personal mission is to do my part to improve the world one strengthened relationship at a time. So today I want to share with you a few encouraging and practical perspectives on LGBTQ plus Pride Month. In case you weren't aware, June is Pride Month, also known as LGBTQ plus Pride Month, and it's intended to acknowledge the achievements as well as the struggles of those in the LGBTQ plus community. Similar to all the additional Awareness and History Month, which you may also be familiar with, if you identify as being a part of the LGBTQ plus community, then it can be a great opportunity to experience direct as well as indirect acknowledgement of not only oneself, and those who you may share an identity with and thus similar experiences with, but also those who came before you. In addition, similar to the additional awareness and history months, you don't have to share the identity of the community being acknowledged to make the most of the opportunity to intentionally increase your knowledge and awareness of the experiences of those outside of your own life experiences. That being said, I can acknowledge that gender identity and sexual orientation are significantly controversial topics of conversation, both publicly as well as in discussions within homes and community gatherings around the world. Whether it be strong faith-based feelings and consequent behaviors or practices, or even political efforts to increase or decrease opportunities, access, or even communication, this topic is often not only frequently polarizing, but often has a potential to impact opportunities and access, as well as in personal and professional relationships alike. And as a major family therapist committed to helping strengthen personal and professional relationships everywhere, instead of trying to provide some one size fits all solution that answers everyone's questions and ends every conversation, I would like to offer a few considerations that can help you healthily navigate relationships and conversations on this often sensitive topic of gender identity and sexual orientation, whether you identify as part of the LGBTQ plus community or not. Consideration number one focuses on acceptance. Whether you support the community or not, it would be helpful to accept the existence of those within the LGBTQ plus community at the very least. Over 9 million American adults identify as being part of the LGBTQ plus community. And that's just the number of people who feel safe to identify as being a part of that community. Many people still feel that it would be safe, unsafe for them to identify publicly who they know themselves to be personally. Unfortunately, based on the history of lost family and friend relationships, after coming out, losses of jobs and opportunities, or even violent hate crimes, this safety concern is very much understandable. And similarly, despite the efforts of many politicians, just not saying gay or other similar efforts doesn't change the reality of their existence. 
In contrast, without putting a stamp of approval or disapproval on someone's identity and corresponding life expression, you can support the healthy self-esteem of a person by acknowledging their existence and who they see themselves to be. For many, this transition from denial of someone's existence or hyper-focus in every conversation on changing what someone doesn't seem to be a problem, and instead, too, changing it to acknowledging that a person's gender identity or sexual orientation doesn't have to be the only relevant factor in a person's interaction with you, can have a significant impact, not only on your relationship with them as a friend or neighbor or colleague, but also for them in their individual lives as well which leads to consideration number two, which is about equity and inclusion. When it comes to what impact differences in gender identity or sexual orientation should have on your day-to-day -day interactions with a person, I challenge you to explore what impact your gender identity or sexual orientation has on your ability to, say, be a good friend, neighbor, or colleague. What impact those factors have on your ability to perform a task in your profession, or even just to be a good person that someone can trust or be happy is around. No one wants their differences between them and someone else to be used as an excuse to exclude them from personal or professional opportunities. And yet, this not only unfortunately occurs every day, but is often defended with justifications of, well, you know, we, we just don't want to send the wrong message. Which makes me ask the question, what message exactly are you focused on avoiding? Again, we all have similarities and differences, including but not limited to gender identity and sexual orientation. And we all have the opportunity to send healthy and unhealthy messages on any topic, but similar efforts of exclusion are not always distributed equally. To exclude someone who is not focused on promoting a personal agenda, but instead is just trying to do the job you asked them to do, and which you are okay with someone else doing as well, despite the fact that you don't support every aspect of their lives either, says less about their existence being a potential threat and more about the potential misperceptions and misunderstandings influencing your leadership decisions. Which leads to consideration number three, and that's about education. Pride Month is a great opportunity to learn about experiences outside of your own. No matter where you identify as it relates to gender identity or sexual orientation, make intentional efforts to learn about the experiences of those outside of your own, both positive and negative, both the inspiring as well as the discouraging experiences as well. Doing this can help you avoid the relationship damaging impact of skewed biases, negative stereotypes, and the extreme negative actions of those influenced by those unhealthy beliefs. Too often, perpetrators of hate crimes, violent hate crimes toward those in the LGBTQ plus community have expressed that they were motivated in their actions by beliefs that they felt they needed to inflict harm in order to protect themselves from the threat of those in the LGBT community, when in reality, those whom they harmed pose no threat to them at all. The key to remember here is that increased knowledge and awareness is not about persuading or forcing someone to compromise their beliefs, and it's instead about reducing the myths and misunderstandings that often perpetuate unnecessary, negative, and often harmful interactions. And this leads to the last consideration, at least in this topic, and that is advocacy and support of the basic human rights of everyone. Everyone is worthy of safety, of care, of respect. No matter how you identify individually or what you believe religiously or politically, hopefully we can all agree that no one deserves to be harmed based solely on their gender identity or sexual orientation. We can all advocate for protecting those who are experiencing unwarranted judgment, discrimination, and even violence. You don't have to put a stamp of approval on someone's identity or expression to support their right to live a safe life, the right to have the support of friends or the love of family, the right to have a safe education and fair employment practices. My hope for you is that at least during Pride Month of June and ideally beyond, that you would make the most of the opportunity to learn about the experiences of those around you, including those with whom you share a similar identity and those whom you do not, and build a habit of not reducing a person's identity to only their gender identity, their gender expression or sexual orientation. Find a way to help someone around you who may feel excluded to feel included in whatever role you may have the power to influence. And most importantly, help create emotionally and physically safe environments to everyone to feel free to exist safely. No matter your similarities or differences or how polarizing one's mere existence can be, we can all work one relationship at a time on strengthening healthy relationships with those around us, 
expanding our perspectives and learning more about the experiences of others outside of our own today. And with that, I'll say thanks again for listening to the Diversity Do podcast. If you have any pressing diversity related questions that you'd like me to address in an upcoming podcast, or if your organization is in need of a shame free or empowering guest speaker or training on this often sensitive topic, then feel free to reach out to me directly at www.diversitymadesimple.com. And if you know of anyone else who could benefit from a positive and encouraging perspective on this often difficult topic of diversity, feel free to send them a link to this podcast or share with them my award-winning book, Diversity in Clinical Practice, available at Amazon.com. And as usual, I look forward to addressing as many topics as possible in future podcasts to help you improve as many relationships as possible at work, at home, and in your community. And as always, remember this, you don't need to know everything about everyone in order to have a positive impact on someone. Thank you all for tuning in and have a great day. Tune in each week and find out how to demand and implement diversity at your job. To hear more, check out previous Diversity Dude shows on ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. Hi, I'm Shaletta Brundage. I'm a media personality, podcaster, and a business owner. But my most important role is mom. Three of my beautiful kids have been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. When I didn't know who to trust or where to turn, I found ACRA. ACRA provides home care services to families all over Minnesota. The care is not one size fits all. They know each one of my kids is unique. They listen to what resources we needed and what's best for our family. I've seen my kids grow and thrive with ACRA's in-home care. While autism is the most common diagnosis among ACRA clients, ACRA offers personalized in-home care services for people with disabilities, chronic illnesses, behavioral diagnosis, and mental illness. They work with children, adolescents, and older folks too. Find out more about ACRA at their website, acrahomecare.org. ACRA helps me provide my kids with a better quality of life. They can do it for your family too. You know Shaletta makes you laugh, but did you know Shaletta Brundage can also make you think and boost your business? Media personality, activist, and comedian Shaletta Brundage founded Shaletta Makes Me Laugh to celebrate and share the best of black culture. It's a podcasting platform. You can download 10 weekly podcasts hosted by African-American subject experts at ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com is also a production house, creating broadcast quality commercial content. And Shaletta and her team of storytellers create powerful promotional campaigns to get businesses the brand awareness they're looking for. Some of Minnesota's top businesses trust Shaletta, and you can too. Get out the word about your events and products and get in front of communities of color with ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. She's got the power to help your business. COVID-19 is still going around, and even a mild case can be serious during pregnancy. So what should you do if you're pregnant and have a positive COVID test? First, reach out to your doctor or healthcare provider. There might be treatment options they can recommend. That includes giving you a prescription for an antiviral drug you take in pill form by mouth. If you haven't gotten a COVID vaccine, it's not too late. Doctors say vaccinations are safe in any trimester but the sooner the better. Pregnancy can be a time of great joy and anticipation. So take good care so you and your baby are healthy. And congratulations. Do you worry that lead-based pain in your older home might be dangerous to your children or kids who visit you? Well, Hennepin County put those fears to rest. Hennepin County offers free lead tests and home assessments. If they find anything, eligible homeowners and landlords can receive up to $15,000 for work on the home, including new windows. 
The government banned lead-based paint 45 years ago when it was discovered that lead poisoning can affect development and cause permanent damage in young children. But 75% of those homes built before 1978 still contain some lead-based paint. As the paint degrades, it can make dust that little kids ingest when they're crawling and putting things in their mouths. So make sure your home is safe and hazard-free. Learn about testing and that $15,000 grant at hennepin.us backslash lead control. That's hennepin.us backslash lead control.